day. Here today, brewing again as usual. It's Melbourne Cup Day, public holiday. I'm going to brew, brew my black metal IPA. I haven't brewed it for a while, so I thought I'd give it a bash again. Um, and I just had a look. It's been two years since I uploaded the original black metal IPA video uh, with the complete process. Now, not much has changed since then. I've been a bit lazy and haven't uh, bothered updating anything in the, much in the brewery because. I haven't needed to, <laughs> it works. But uh, I thought I'd just show you a few of the things that has changed um, and if it's made any difference or not. So it's in the mash tun right now here. Uh, there's not much change about the mash tun. I recently changed uh, the PVC manifold over to the copper. Um, I'll, quickly sh I'll show you something about that. So I've changed to a copper manifold as I said. I haven't noticed any perceivable changes in flavour, of course, uh, from using my, C, uh, my PVC one for so long. Um, it was just something to, to do to upgrade a bit. I was sick of it sort of bending and uh, things like that. But, I mean, that PVC one, it did me for years without any issues. I will do a video uh, a bit about this, making the copper one, if people want to see it. As I said before, there will be a video about uh, the manifolds. I've been saying that for a few years now, but I, I did film some of when I, when I finished making my copper one. So I'll put some of that up soon. Other than that, the next thing I've been mucking around with lately is fly sparging. I used to always batch sparge. Um, so I'll show you how I do that when I get to that stage. Uh, I haven't found much difference. People kept telling me that my well, efficiency might go up and all that. Uh, if I change from batch to fly, but it's sort of been the opposite. Um, it's only been a point or two. The first couple of brews were nearly exactly the same. Uh, the last couple of brews have been like a point down. Uh, so, you know, I haven't found much difference. I found the fly sparge a bit quicker because you don't have to mess up your grain bed, uh, you know, the second time and then wait for it to settle. Um, besides that, the results. They're virtually the same, except yeah, they've been a bit under. I'll see how they go today. I haven't done a fly sparge uh, with a bigger beer yet, so even though this isn't a huge beer, it's bigger than my usual ones, and uh, so we'll see how the fly sparge goes with that and see if I lose too many points. So mash out is complete. We'll just do the usual of recircling a few liters through until it comes clear. So that bit's exactly the same. So I've just researched that through so it's come through clear. Now I'll put my uh, collection bucket I use under there and start the drain as usual. All I do now is I'll drain it down until it gets about an inch above the grain bed. Bit hard to see with this black light, yeah. About an inch above the uh, the grain bed in there, and then I'll just turn on the water from the HLT into the top of it like that. I'll show you when we get there. So there we go. There's the black wort. Very dark, isn't it? And we're getting close down now to the grain bed. It's a bit hard to see there. Bloody trucks going past. So I have the water in my HLT at about 78 degrees and we just turn the tap on. Try and have it coming out about the same speed as it's coming out down the bottom there. That's all you need to do. Now you could have a longer hose and lay that on top of the grain bed but uh, there's no need for fancy spar jams on, on brewing a scale like this. It's just more to clean up, more to go wrong, more to get in the way. I just use this, it just breaks it up a little bit. Yeah, try and have it pointing to somewhere where the holes aren't, just to help it break it up a little, a little bit more. You 
you'll start to see the top clear out as the sugars get uh, pushed down and when your collection bucket gets full or near the top or you've got to empty it like I have to in this setup just turn the taps off both of them empty your bucket start again it's that simple there you go fly sparge ghetto style You don't need to use this. You can have a plate on top of the mash bed if you're worried. You just have, have it going onto the plate. Now I, I haven't had to change. I haven't had to change any settings on beer smith or anything. Um, but of course, with this method, you've got to watch your levels. Whoops! And know where you're uh, where you started and where you've got to turn off your water so you don't over sparge or under sparge. So that'll do for this, and I'll empty this bucket, and we'll start again. That's probably not the best example to use a black IPA for this, but I can see that it's getting clearer on the top of there. I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but you, can, you couldn't see down into that water before. But now you can see all the grains and bits of proteins and things floating around down there. Just watch your levels. I'm just about done. I need to get down to 16 litres. So just keep the eye on that. Turn the top tap off. Let the mash uh, tun drain out. And that's it. As you can see from the colour of this second runnings, there's definitely not much left in that grain. You can see how clear the water is on top. So I've just taken the pre-boil now. It's supposed to be 1.045, but it's actually reading at about 1.049. I might just take another reading, sometimes you get a bit skewed. And we'll see what the other one says. Sounds very high. Now, I don't know why. Oops, I'm very smart. Drip water into my star sand bucket. No, it's this. Re why aren't you still saying 049? That's odd. Just take another, even though we've been boiling for 10 minutes now, I'll take another sample out and let that cool. Just double check that because it seems very high. Well, wow, that's very odd. I've just double checked everything. It's supposed to be 045. So I'm four points up. <laughs> Lately, since I've been doing this uh, fire sparging, I've been a couple, one point down. Alright, we'll see how we go at the end of the boil, we'll see where we're at. Won't hurt the beer at all. It'd be more boozy. That's alright, isn't it? Alright, here we go again. That sample's cooled down. I'll just stick a drop on here and see what it's saying there. Uh, well, it's definitely accurate because that's uh, about 52 and a half now. So, whatever happened, my efficiency was up a bit today. There you go, eh? You just never know what's going to happen on a brew day, do you? Just when you think you got everything down pat, someone throws a curveball. The other thing I've started doing, I oh, can't show you right now, is using the plate chiller, which you might have seen in some videos I uploaded. I have done a video about that too that hasn't been uploaded yet. Uh, it will be. And because I've been using the plate chiller, you don't want much gunk going through your plate chiller to get caught in it, even though you rinse it out and even though you can soak it in your PBWs or your um, whatever you soak it in, you still don't want stuff going through it. So I, I got a, a basket like this. That just makes it a little bit easier to add additions. I was just using a, a bag, 
I was just using a, this grain bag, which I still do sometimes, because I find for the really hugely hot beers, like this will be, uh, one of these baskets really isn't enough. Unless you're on it and you're shaking it all the time, the hops and the proteins and that tend to block up the bag, uh, block it up. And by the time you get to your flame out hops, uh, I just think there's not enough space in there. Half of it's blocked with gunk. Um, so sometimes I either use a second bag for the late edition hops, or if you had two of these, you could use two of these, I don't. And just hang that over the side like that. And then, uh, but lately, I found out the late editions, I just wasn't happy with the steep and the contact that the hops had in the steeping um, for the flame out hops. So I decided to try an old way I used to muck around with. Um, and it seemed to work. I used it last week, or the week before, and I'll show you now. It's just a bit of stainless steel wool over my pickup tube. Um, I just found that easier than having to muck around and buy some sort of filter for the bottom or whatever. That's just an easy way of doing it, cheap. Um, you can throw them away if you want. I, I got a pack of three for, I don't know, it was a dollar at the supermarket or something like that. It might have even been less. And so there I've just put some stainless steel wool. I've loosened that off the pickup tube, put the uh, stainless wool over it and push your pickup tube back down, tighten it up. That just helps those last minute whirlpool hops not all go through my plate chiller. And that's just to stop too much gunk going through my chiller. Uh, well the chiller's new since, since the first video too. And um, I love the plate chiller. Yes, it's a little bit of a pain in the ass to clean. Uh, at the end of the day, you feel like sitting down and you know you've got to clean that first. Um, these days I'm lazy to clean it. I still clean it at the end of the day, but before a brew day, I always bake it in the oven um, just to make sure it's sterile. I don't, that way I don't have to worry about running star sand through it or anything else through it before the wort has to go through. Wort. So we're at the boil, a nice boil going there, there's two elements, the other one's under here, but it's boiling about the same, and the 60 minute addition I'll use the basket for, which is this one, which might be hard to do with one hand, but I'm going to attempt it, there we go, can't remember exactly, you'll have to look at the recipe, I just weighed it out before, I think it's about 28 or 32 grams of Columbus from memory. I do know, I just have to weigh up a lot of different hops just then. <laughs> so we get that mixed in. And we'll be right to go. Right, it's time for the 15 minute addition, and I'll just have a look at this basket, see how it's going. So that's not too bad. It blocked up a bit, but you just got to keep shaking it every. Yes, that's alright, that can take more hops easily, so the 15 minute can go into there. And also at this time I'll add a worth lock, I should probably should have crushed it at five or something. Doesn't matter. As I said, the recipe's been up for a long time if you want to check it out. I'll leave a link. Come back at 10 minutes and see what I think. Alright, it's time for the 10 minute addition. Now see how it blocks up? I don't know if you that, but if you give it a few shakes. There we go, it's gone now. Um, I'll, I'm going to throw the 10 minute in the basket. Again. And the last two, the 5 minute and the flame out, I won't put in the basket. So there goes the 10. Every minute or so for these ones that aren't in for very long, I'll just come and give it a bit of a shake like that. I'll sit them between the elements. Finally got a beer too, red rye. Uh, it's fucking nice. <laughs> Excuse the French. Hadn't brewed it before, a red rye. But I'm loving it. Cheers. 
Alright, here goes the five minute. And I'm just going to chuck that in the side and I'm not putting that in the uh, basket. The basket's getting too clogged. Alright, there goes the alarm for the end of the boil. Typically, someone started mowing their lawn. So I won't record much because it's a bit noisy. I'll just take this hot basket out, get the beer, much of the water out of it as I can be bothered waiting for. That'll do. Turn the elements off. Add the flame out hops. Give this a whirlpool. Or well, my version, hand whirlpool. Just till you get a nice spinning motion. Lid on and wait for 10 minutes and we'll chill it. I'm just still waiting for the steep. There's the chiller set up. As I said, I'll do a video, a whole video on this chiller. How I set it up. So time's up, but what I also usually do is just because you pick up tube, even though I've got that um, makes you filter on there, you're still going to get a little bit of gunk. And instead of getting that first bit of gunk from the boil and that, into the chiller. I'll just run a little bit into the container and chuck it away. Something like this. Just a bowl or something. Pull that off. Run a bit out. There you go. That's cleared that pickup tube now from the stuff that was in the boil. On the chiller. Oops, I didn't put the connector on. Hold on. Let me get rid of that. Put the connector on just in case it decides it wants to pop off, which it probably won't. But I'll do it anyway. All right, we're ready to go. So the hose is already already running. I'll turn that on full. I can back it off here by a little uh, tap thing. If I'm getting too hot or too cold, back it off, turn it on. I can also adjust with the hose, the cold water too. So that, at the moment, which you can't see, it's coming through about 19 degrees, which is, you know, perfect. That's fine. And we're off. Now I put this bit of foil around here just because sometimes it gets windy here and I don't want dust and crap blowing in. And because it's sunny too, I will cover the fermenter on the sunny side with an old t-shirt or something just to stop any uh, sun affecting the wort. And then look, I'd leave it go for a minute like I just did. We'll have another look. All right, we're just, I don't know if you can focus on that, just over 20, nearly 21. But that's fine for pitching. I don't mind it being warm. If it gets any warmer than that, I'll back it off a bit. I'll turn the cold tap up. It's getting a little bit warmer, so I'll just back that off a little. Screw it down. And you'll see, and usually no time, but I might have to go and turn the cold tap up a bit. It's fairly warm here today. 
It takes a little while to adjust, but uh, we'll check it again in a second and we'll see where it's at. The other good thing is that the output here, this water is virtually hot. So you can, uh, not virtually hot, really hot. <laughs> so you can collect that for your uh, washing up bucket. Makes cleaning things easier. And what's the temp done since I backed it off a bit? Yeah, see it's dropped. It's now just over 20. It'll probably go down a little bit more if I... Well, that's fine. Mine's going in the fermenter fridge. Um, so you, it's actually beneficial to the yeast to pitch a little bit warm. But 20 degrees is fine either way, isn't it? It doesn't really matter. 20 degrees is perfect. Yeah, there's a bit of focus. There you go. And we've already done well, over about half of it. It's flying. So we're just about there. As soon as it starts bubbling like that, I know it's running out. So I can turn this tap off and I'll have enough left in the chiller to uh, fill up my test jar easily. There we go. Just like that. And the good thing about that is that uh, I can test that straight away. That's um. 20 degrees through the chiller. It is probably about 100. Yeah, we're still at four points up, I'd reckon. It's a bit hard to see there with the bubbles. It's, pro, it's over 156, maybe 157, 158. It's a bit hard to tell, as I said, with the bubbles. So we're still four points up. Well, there you go. Uh, besides that, I, for probably the last two years, I've been using liquid yeasts nearly exclusively. Um, but recently, the last couple of months, um, I've gone back to some uh, dry yeast. And look, I haven't found any difference. Of course, if you need one, a specialty one um, that, that you can't get in dry. I, I like them both. I can just get dry yeast a bit cheaper. And uh, if I, at the moment, I would never know what I'm going to brew, so I don't have time to make a starter. As soon as I, my life settles down a bit again, and I've got time to make a starter, I'll probably do some liquid yeast again. And I've changed my boil pot, which I think I uploaded a video about that, uh, to stainless. The re only reason being, I, need, I wanted a bit more room. I was sick of every brew being one centimetre from the top of my aluminium pot. You know what, I'm going to pop down there. And... Easy of cleaning, I can, at the end of the day, if I am feeling a bit lazy, I can get most of the gunk out and I can throw some sodium picarb in there and let it sit overnight or whatever, I don't have to worry about it, I couldn't sort of do that with the aluminium one. Um, you can use those sort of cleaners on it, you just don't want to let it sit for, for very long at all, so you sort of want to use it on them and then rinse it. I haven't found any difference in flavour to beers, of course, from, from changing to uh, the stainless boil pot. So there you go, that was a bit of a weird brew day, four points up all the way along. I'll have to double check, I was a bit of a rush of the recipe, I didn't know I was brewing today and it was all a bit rushed. So I'll just double check, but uh, four points up, weird. Anyway, here's my red rye again, looks dark from your side doesn't it? It's not like dark, I'll grab the camera and show you in a sec. So in two years, not much has changed. HLT is the same, oh, there is the new Keg King element which hasn't failed on me yet, the new model. Fly sparged. Um, and because I'm using the plate chiller, bags or baskets or whatever you want, uh, to just to help filter the hops from going through the chiller. Other than that, that's about it. Cheers. I hope you get a winner today in the Melbourne Cup. I hope I get a winner too. Might be able to buy some brew stuff. <laughs> Cheers.